The whole idea behind factoring a polynomial completely is that we want to make sure we factor uh, as much as we can. It may not be just one step of factoring and you're done. There may be multiple ways you can factor a single problem. So you always want to, that's why this step three over here, check for more factors. I always call it the recycling step because once you get to the end, you have to sort of recycle and go back to the beginning and check for more ways to factor. So uh, let's go ahead and try a few of these. Uh, all these are going to combine old ways of factoring, so nothing new yet all difference of two squares, trinomials, and things that we've seen before. So step one is always, 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 no matter what, look for a greatest common factor. Always start there. And so in this first trinomial, uh, every single piece has an x in common. Every term can be divided by x. And so what I'll do is I'll divide out an x, uh, which will drop all the powers by one. So x squared plus 2x and then minus 15. So my greatest common factor has been found. Next step is we want to try to factor using one of the methods that we know. Uh, this is where the flow chart I gave you in class may be very handy. Since there's three terms inside the parentheses and there's a one in front of that trinomial, uh, I would suggest try to factor this just like a normal trinomial, one of the easy ones where we say what multiplies to negative 15 but adds up to two. So like I said, they're just combining multiple ways to factor into one problem. Well, the two numbers that do that, that multiply to negative, uh, multiply to negative 15, but add up to negative two, are gonna be a positive five and a negative three. Uh, as we factored before, those will both have x's in them. And then the only thing you wanna remember is don't forget to include your greatest common factor in front of your answer. So there is going to be my completely factored uh, polynomial. Now, a few ways to know that you're done factoring. If you ever end up uh, with x to the first power in parentheses, uh, you're going to be done. Unless you missed a greatest common factor along the way, that's going to be factored completely. However, if you have x squared, you'd probably want to check for more ways to factor. Maybe you have difference of two squares. Maybe it's done in x squared, but maybe it's not. Uh, one way you can check these problems, recall, is you could check this by graphing. Uh, graph your answer on your calculator as y1, and graph the original problem as y2, and compare what the graphs look like. If you only see one graph, you know, you'll know you factored correctly. Um, if you see more than one graph, then, then something went wrong. Okay, so let's do a few more examples, but like I said, this is all just kind of combining some old ways of factoring into new problems. So let's take this binomial down below. First thing, no matter what you're gonna uh, do later on, always start with the greatest common factor. Two and 18 are both divisible by two, so I'm gonna pull that out. Uh, and then they both also have a y to the third in common. Now some people are confused because we call it the greatest common factor, but we take out the lowest exponent. It's because they, that's all we can get. They, they only both have y to the third in common. I can't take out more than y to the third, the, uh, the first piece, or the second piece doesn't have more than y to the third. So let's divide both terms by 2y to the third. That'll leave me with y squared right here. We're just reverse, uh, we're doing reverse distributive property, really. And then the second term would just be a negative 9. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. And the y's are all gone. Now at this point, you want to check your parentheses for more ways to factor. Uh, there's two terms in there, and I'm noticing it's a difference problem. It's a subtraction problem. And I'm noticing that nine is a perfect square. So this is really the difference of two squares. So I will have a second step to follow, or to do, uh, to factor this all the way. The way that difference of two squares worked was uh, we would split it into two parentheses and then take square roots. There'd be a y in the front, and then the square root of nine is three. The only difference was one parentheses plus and one's minus. Uh, and once again, don't forget to include your greatest common factor in front. So there's my completely factored polynomial. Uh, and again, since I have y to the first power in parentheses, I know that's done unless I missed a greatest common factor, which I didn't. All right, and then just one more to do. Once again, very first step uh, is find your greatest common factor. All those uh, numbers are divisible by four, so I'm gonna uh, pull a four out. And then they all at least have a z squared in common. So I'm gonna pull out a four z squared. And when I say pull out a four z squared, I mean divide out a four z squared. So dividing, uh, I'm gonna end up with z squared uh, minus four z and then plus four. Uh, and once again, I can check it by redistributing um, the 4z squared into the parentheses. Uh, looking at the trinomial that's left over, once again, uh, I have one where it's got a one in front, so I can do the whole what multiplies to add, what multiplies to the end and adds up to the middle trick. If there wasn't a one in front, I would need to use the box method. Uh, so the two numbers that do this are going to be uh, negative two and negative two. Negative two times itself is positive four, and negative two plus negative two is negative four. Uh, I'll have a z in front, 
And then once again, don't forget to include your greatest common factor, the 4z squared. So that has been factored completely.